Recorded live. This is episode 14 of Reality PC. This is literally an impromptu. I schedule it two hours before start time. This week's feature topic of discussion is going to include ISP Config 3, which is an open source web hosting software. I use it for my business and my activism websites or site. So let me post a link to in chat. Let me go through my proverbial links. You can go to chatgrabber.com, type in call ID 78107. There will be a list of chat transcripts for all previous broadcasts, including this one to get links to my most common computer problems blog, anetservices.biz, you can opt in. You can sign up to my email list. There's an Atom feed, RSS feed. I'm also on Facebook and Twitter. Facebook.com slash anetcomputers. You can like this or like that page. Twitter.com slash ANET computers. You can follow me. Instead of joining up for my most common computer problems alert email list, which I tried to and I have time weekly, I try to send out a blog cast on Thursdays, which is just a list of my most common blog posts. But instead of signing up for my list or using an Atom, an Atom feed or an RSS feed, You can follow me on Twitter because I tweet all my blog posts. You can also subscribe to me or to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash anetcomputers. You can always send me an email to help at anetservices.biz. Questions, comments, suggestions, etc. What else? So let's get to ISP Config 3. Let me post links in chat to my websites first. Okay, let me bring up the link to ISP Config 3. I'm not going to go over in convoluted, complex instructions on how to do this, how to do that, but I'm going to briefly go over all facets of ISP Config 3. So let me pull up my bookmark. So you can go to ispconfig.org i s p c o n f i g i s p as an in internet service provider config dot org is completely free I have it running on a dual core system with what one hundred and sixty gig sata hard drive three gigahertz dual core two gigs of ram I have a third gig of RAM chip that is the wrong kind, so I need to return it. It'll run great on three gigs. I initially only had one gig, but that's not sufficient enough, even for three websites and email. Two gigs is pretty good, but three gigs will be even better. I built that web server myself. I have a $70 Comcast business class broadband connection it's a business account Res- Comcast and a lot of ISPs don't like you to, to serve web pages or video or whatever on residential accounts so it's only $70 it's what 12 megabits per second down 2 megabits per second up plus I can host websites or web servers or I can use it to host servers not just web servers And so really, I'm only paying $10 a month for web hosting because my residential Comcast account before that 
was sixty dollars a month. So really, I'm only paying ten dollars a month. And really, depending depending on what kind of websites you build, you really maybe don't want to spend that much money. Like my computer repair business is hosted anetcomputers.com, my anetservices.biz, my internet most common computer problems blog is hosted on that, and my realityunknown.com anarchist activist website is also hosted on the same server. So I only pay ten bucks a month for three websites. So I installed it on a CentOS 6 minimal install. If you're familiar with Linux, basically that means that I didn't install CentOS 6 desktop or CentOS 6 of a full version or more complete. You can, a lot of Linux distributions, you can download minimal distributions or minimal installs of that distribution. Basically minimal is hence that term minimal. It's basically good or great, whatever, for servers. It's a basic install of the Linux operating system. doesn't come with X Windows, doesn't come with KDE or GNOME, doesn't come with a lot of bells and whistles, and since it doesn't have a windowing manager, then obviously you're not going to have a lot of graphical u user interface software, GUI software. It's the basics. You, you have to know command line. You have to know Linux commands. You have to be able to FTP or SSH like I do. And root, you need root. So I'm very well versed. I'm self-taught. And so I decided to build my own web server. I had a previous web server before that SME server 7.5. 7 there were some limitations with that. I think it was, what was it? I ran that for about a year. Oh, I think it was, it didn't support PHP 5 or, or MySQL 5. I can't remember. One of the two. So, on to ISP Config 3. I'm at their website now. It says ISP Config 3 hosting control panel software. It's open source, meaning it's free. It uses BSD license. I haven't read the license. It's an open source software. I really don't care about licenses commercial or otherwise. I don't care about copyleft or Creative Commons licenses. I just don't care about licenses, period. Even open source. I don't read them. There, I prefer open source software because obviously it's free. There's some limitations and but overall I don't really like licenses, period. To me that's not about freedom. It's about, well, you can do this, you can do that, but you can't do this, you can't do you know, etc. Obviously commercial licenses are there, in my opinion, for money, capitalism, or control, or slavery, or however you want to put it. So ISP config three. More freedom. Manage multiple servers from one control panel. I do like their control panel and I'll be going over that. Web Server Management, Apache 2, and Nginx. I installed ISP Config 3 the first time, or a first time, with Apache 2. And then the second time I went and installed ISP Config 3. But halfway through, I realized that I was installing ISP Config 3, ISP Config 3 with Nginx. Nginx is a different web server. I, Apache 2 is a web server type of software. Nginx is another one. I think it's quicker. I think there's advantages to it, but I don't have time to sit there and go line by line through all the coding, or I'm not a programmer, or I don't have the time to research well. Apache 2, Nginx, you know, which one's better? Apache 2 is probably the most popular web server on the Internet. Even websites that are hosted on... Windows machines or Windows servers, you know, s server, what, 2008 or 2003, Windows server, well, oftentimes they will use Apache 2. Apache 2 is free and not sure about the licensing, if it's open source or, you know, quite frankly, I don't care. So, so instead of going back and reinstalling reinst Apache 2, because I'm more familiar with Apache 2, I've worked with Apache, and so I'm more familiar with it. 